The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. Problem 1 says, if the magnitude of vector a plus vector b, all squared, is equal to a squared plus b squared, then and it gives us a series of options. So, so we can see what we're looking at. Okay. Now, this is uh, really testing your understanding of vector algebra, and under yeah, basically how well you can understand how vectors work. So. A squared plus B squared should jog your memory, should ring a bell. What is A squared plus B squared equals to? Equals C squared. Okay? That side should be pretty clear on what it's normally equal to, at least. It should give you kind of an idea of where to go. You look at this one, this one probably looks a little bit more foreign to you because we're not used to dealing with vectors. But this is Pythagoras' theorem. That's exactly what this is. Okay? If you had two vectors that are perpendicular, so we have. A vector A and a vector B that's perpendicular. Now they don't say perpendicular in this problem, I'm just saying I'm defining these two vectors as being perpendicular to one another. If you would add them together, then you would do that head tail thing, however you want to do it, and that would be your vector. Normally we would call it C. Okay. So if you added the vectors together using vector algebra, C is what you would get every time. That's just how vector algebra works. That's how you do it. So then you take the magnitude of C, and then you have the number C. So instead of having these, because these are all, this is, this is our vector A, this is vector B, this is vector C. So if you took C, and you took the magnitude of it, you would just get, this is how you write it, just C. That would just be a number instead of a, a number with a direction. There's just a magnitude to it. So now we take that, this, since we can say that, uh, and it's getting a little confusing. What we can say is vector A plus vector B, if they're 90 degrees to one another, must be equal to vector C. Okay? We can say that the magnitude of vector C just gives us the magnitude C. That's what it is. So if this equals this and this equals this, basically what we can do is do some little substitutions. Just rewriting the equation. We can do our first substitution and we can say, well, we know vector A plus vector B if they're 90 degrees equals that. And we can substitute this guy in for that. Now it should look a little more familiar to you. Now, now we understand what we're looking at, we have to look at the problem again and say, this is asking us when these conditions are true, basically. So we just define these conditions as being true when they're perpendicular to one another. Okay, so A and B are 90 degrees. Now, now they don't have that answer on there, but they have none of these. So, what we need to go through and do is check to see that none of the other ones are true, okay? A plus B, or basically you need to look through all your answers, especially if there's a none of these answer, once you know exactly that one of them has to be true. So, A and B must be parallel and in the same direction. Well, let's look at that. So, let's say we have some vector, let's A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 2, okay? So, if we look on the left side, we would add the two vectors together, and if you just add parallel vectors, we would just get a vector equal to 6. Then, take the magnitude and you just get the number 6. So, we'd be saying 6 squared is equal to magnitude of A plus magnitude of B, each squared separately. Now, this is going to be saying that 36 is equal to 16 plus 4. Now, that's not true. Okay. So, our second choice can't be an option, okay? Now, 
third choice says A and B must be parallel and in opposite directions. So, let's keep those same nice little easy numbers. Now if you add vectors that point in the opposite direction of one another, remember they would, they're going to subtract from one another. So we're going to end up with a vector 2 pointing to the right. Okay? So, add these two vectors together, you get 2. Take the magnitude, it's just simply 2, because it's only one vector. You can say 2 squared is equal to 4 squared, and then this would technically be negative because it's pointing to the left, and we're considering right to be our positive on our axis. But it's not going to matter when you square it, because 2 squared is not going to be equal to 4 squared plus a negative 2 all squared. Okay? This is going to be equal to the 4. 4 is equal to uh, 16 plus 4, and that's obviously not true as well. So number 3 is not an option. Okay? So unless either 4 and 5 are true, then number 1 is going to be our choice. Now, here's the trick with 4 and 5. You can go through and prove them, or you could look at the wording. And if you look at the wording, it's going to save you a lot more time. Number 4 states either A, vector A, or vector B must be 0. Okay? Plug it in up there, it's going to work. But it says it must be 0. I just proved that Pythagorean theorem is as long as any two vectors are 90 degrees, this holds true for them. So if choice 4 says either A or B must be 0, and I've proved a situation where neither A or B are 0, are zero and this still holds true, then 4 can't be your choice. Okay? Same thing applies to 5. 5, I think 99, but never said sure it won't work. I haven't actually worked it out. But uh, it says it must, one of them must be 60 degrees. Or it says the angle between them, excuse me, must be 60 degrees. We know that one can't be true because I just proved a situation where the angle was 90 degrees and it was right. So the wording in those two choices, that, that must there, is actually just would save you a lot of time and trouble even proving it or being Because then you prove it and then you pick that one and then you get the wrong answer. So, keys to this identify Pythagoras theorem. No Pythagoras theorem. Like, Back of your hands, okay? It's very, very important in this class. And uh, look at the wording in these problems. They're going to use very specific wording. There's always keywords, and the wording that they use is just, it's designed in a very specific way. Reading physics problems itself should be a little two-week course at the beginning, just so you know what these words mean. But a must is why number one is true. Otherwise, choice four would be the right answer. But it's not, because... So, that's the end of the problem. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.